now I'm getting multiple returns. One of the people that called uh, that I had to, had to happen to talk to said it looked like a bunch of cylindrical objects. Well, we, oh were, my God, what is that? They were going together and coming apart. Yeah, know? they're well, it's it's there's three and they're they're lengthwise. Now I'm getting three of them, and. Uh, I'm getting a third one now, and they're about, they're separated by about, um, looks like about 5,000 feet in height. It just, an officer just sent me a message here, he says, uh, about, about maybe, uh, they're separated by about 50 kilometers. Hmm. They're very strong returns. I'm getting a real, um, they're, they're spiking, so it's, there's something pretty, it's, Something pretty solid, it's not precipitation or anything, especially up at that height. Yeah, an officer uh, in, in the Holland City just sent me a message. He says, you know, can can we identify anything further? He says, it looks like uh, three to four of them. I'm seeing three. Yeah. I'm seeing three, and they're separated by. Uh, yeah. Oh, they look like a triangle on my scope. I'm looking one around down by uh, South Haven. I'm seeing another one over Lake Michigan, about north west of Benton Harbor and another one west of, or east of Benton Harbor, which would be uh, near, looks like Decatur. Hmm. I'm seeing three of those. They're very strong. Now I'm getting another one down in uh, Berrien County. These are huge returns. I've never seen anything like this. Not even when I'm doing storms. They're, uh, these aren't storms. They're, they're like, they're just popping up all over the place. This is strange, yeah, because the officer says it's uh, green and red lights. It does not look like an airplane. Okay. They come together, and then they separate, and they just keep doing this all the time. These are all up around um, about between seven and 12,000 feet. Oh, this is strange. This is really so, weird. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know if it's some kind of energy or um, it's... Is, is, is picking up something. I wish I could. I wish we had a picture of this. That was a conversation between the National Weather Service in Muskegon, Michigan, and a nearby 911 operator. It happened on March 8, 1994. Around 9:30 that night, residents of Lake Michigan's eastern edge began seeing strange lights in the sky, and called the police. It looks like a string of crystal lights that's way up in the sky. There were uh, at least four lights, and they were all flashing like, like okay, they were the sequence. And is there any Air Force airplanes or helicopters flying around in Allegan or Ottawa County tonight? Well, it's not a really emergency. We just called them off the meal phones. Mm -hmm. They're out there. The same yeah. airplanes. The sheer number of these calls motivated one 911 operator to call the National Weather Service. What they found was surprising. And like the older Project Blue Book, may have been subject to debunking by federal officials. We cover strange declassified files. Subscribe to join us. Puzzled, the 911 operator called the National Weather Service in Muskegon. Well, the service is Muskegon. Hi, Muskegon. This is Ottawa County 911 calling. Yeah, how you doing? Good. You guys have access to a radar there, don't you? Yes, we do. You do. You getting anything weird down in the southern Ottawa County area? Anything weird? Hold on for a second. Okay. Okay, they look like they're moving. They're all moving toward the south, towards Chicago. There's three returns moving towards Chicago. Um, they're about over the center of uh, Lake Michigan, three of them in a triangle. All right, now you will uh, give them a shot. We'll see what I can uh, locate from them. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. The first call ends. The National Weather Service, though, calls back. Enter dispatch. Yeah, this is um, the National Weather Service in Muskegon. I was calling to make sure that the person that called me was, was really a, uh, a sheriff from out of, out of a county and not a hold. He was one of our dispatchers. Oh, okay. They're calling about the... Uh, right. We've been chasing them all over down that way. Pardon? We've been chasing lights down all over down that way. So, so what, what really is going on? Um, no, we, I still got a car out in the area. Um, so what, 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 what were these things look uh, What do they look like? I don't know. We've got a report of something going through the air with lights on it horizontally, three to 
of four lights going at a high rate of speed up and down and all over the sky. And I bet we've had five or six calls. Right. And they've all been in the South Holland area. South Holland? Yep, from South Holland down to Over Isle, down in that area. O over Isle? Right. Okay. And um, what color were the lights? I didn't really get what color they were. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I did pick up, um, I picked up about three to four um, blips, and they were big. They were, uh, uh, they were, they weren't planes because planes usually show up like as a little, little pinpoint um, that moves uh, through the uh, on the scope. But uh -huh. these were, these were bigger. There were three of them. They, they bounce all over the place, but the, the general movement all, of all three of them were towards Chicago. They, um, I pretty much uh, gave up looking at them uh, when it reached uh, to Southern Lake Michigan. Two weeks later, higher-ups tried to pour cold water on the radar operator. There is no relation between the UFOs and the radar tracks, a local NWS manager told reporters. Although the radar did show some echoes, one key thing is the eyewitnesses saw these things at treetop level, while the echoes were from an altitude of 10,000 feet or higher. That's misleading, though. Not every witness reported something so low to the ground. It looks like a string of Christmas lights that's way up in the sky. And we wondered if you had heard anything about it. Not a thing. Wow, you might not have somebody take a look. It's different. I've never seen anything like it. But, oh, it's I don't know. It's strange. Um, but it's right out circle. east, southeast. It's way up. And it's just like a circle of a lot of different lights flickering. Something else is even more significant, though. Before hanging up, both officials realized something. Sightings on the ground broadly match what was seen on the scope. I think it seems to me like the last thing I said it was moving like to the southeast from Holland towards Allegan County. From to the southeast. Southwest. Okay. Okay. Southwest. Okay. Southwest. I'm sorry. Southwest towards yep. towards that's Chicago. What okay. That's talking about towards Chicago. Yeah, that's what I was I was seeing him actually move towards uh, Chicago. Great. I wish I had. I wish we had a recording of, of what I could see. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, there they are. They are. There's some blips showing up on the computer part, and this is being recorded. So. Oh, good. Uh, there is going to be a recording of it. So if they can, you might be able to see a. Uh, um, um, you know, a movement on this if, if we can play this back. Unfortunately, the radar data was never released. But the Muskegon Chronicle later reported an official calculated one of the objects traveled 10 miles in 10 seconds, 3,600 miles per hour, equivalent to almost Mach 5. Journalists also interviewed witnesses in Holland. A family of four living in a rural farmhouse saw a big circle hovering just above trees 25 yards away. It had lights, but they weren't blinking. It was circular and turning, the mom said. After 10 minutes, it departed to the southwest. Project Blue Book has at least nine older case files from this region, too. In 1949, the Air Force investigated claims a white flying disc passed over Ludington before disappearing over Lake Michigan. Two years later, a tower operator in Grand Rapids saw a round white object heading toward the lake. An airline crew saw a bluish white object heading the same direction, southwest. The most interesting came in February of 53, when five members of the 754th Aircraft and Warning Squadron in Port Austin made visual and radar contact with an unidentified aerial phenomena. It was described as bright, changing color from pink to white to red, and traveling 55 miles per hour at 1,000 feet. After determining no helicopters were nearby, the USAF concluded it remains unknown. Others, though they lack as many details, are also deeply interesting. Such as here, when someone in Beulah saw an egg-shaped object with points on the end, aluminum colored with blue lights, making a hissing sound. Blue Book ruled insufficient data for evaluation. Or here, when a crescent-shaped object was seen by a metal worker above Leland. It didn't look like an airplane, he said. It changed colors from red to green to white. Twelve years later, in 1968, four people in Traverse City, 30 miles east of Beulah, saw a saucer with a large hump in the middle, 
flashing blue, green, and red. The Air Force determined there were no known aircraft or balloons in the area, but decided it was probably just a star or planet. Despite the civilians noting it was moving just above the trees and had a hole that might be a window. Officials tried to explain away other sightings in Michigan too. Like in 67, when two members of the Coast Guard saw a round object over Lake Michigan flashing red, green, and white. USAF said it was Venus. Or in the mid-50s, when a civilian in Hastings saw a round silver object at 9.40 in the morning. It didn't move for 15 minutes. USAF concluded it was, again, Venus. So, is the east edge of Lake Michigan a hotspot? And what might anomalous objects be doing there? We need more data. And we need to compare highly rated sightings from this cluster with those near other lakes. So, how do we do this? We're building a new platform called Sighting that will help us and anyone else analyze the phenomena with modern tools. Over time, we'll implement any new features and filters users want and discuss theories and flaps on our forum. In the long run, we aim to partner with UFO reporting databases and UAP tracking organizations. The beta will be ready in a few weeks, so stay tuned. Patreon supporters get early access. What do you think? Why isn't the 94 Michigan case as widely known as, say, the Phoenix Lights, which happened three years later? Let us know in the comments. Special thank you to our Patreon supporters, including you and E. Thank you all so much. See you next time.